Hello, and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video, we're going to start looking at Zendikar block. Uh, so Zendikar, World Wake, and Rise of the Eldrazi. I'm going to start with the first part of that block, which is just Zendikar. Uh, and we're going to start by looking at Core Armory, which is a mono-white deck. So let's, uh, let's start looking at the cards in here. So... The theme of the deck, as you might have guessed, is the core. Um, so this is, it's a while since we've seen them. Um, the core, I think they last showed up in what, Time Spiral Block? Like a few cards there. And, uh, you know, just one or two. And they kept their kind of iconic, um, like, damage shuffling ability, which they used to have back in uh, Tempest and Stronghold. So now the core are just... Um, there's not anything, they don't have like that damage shuffling ability anymore, it's not really associated with them now on Zendikar. Um, instead they have more focus on uh, kind of equipment and equipment synergies, which is okay. Doesn't work too well in this deck, <laughs> as we'll see, but uh, yeah, let's start looking. So one of the rares of the deck, and this is the foil face rare, is Armament Master. Uh, so two white mana for a 2-2. Um, other core creatures you control get plus two, plus two for each equipment attached to Armament Master. So there is a core tribal theme in the deck. I think all the creatures are core, or at least the majority of them are. Um, so was the plan here is to load up the arm master with equipment and then um, all your other core get boosted. But we'll see why that might be a bit of a problem if you were playing this this deck out of the uh, out of the box. So um, overall, I think this effect is pretty fun. It is very eggs in one basket kind of effect. But um, yeah, I think it's okay. I kind of would have preferred, because um, at time recording, um, Phyrexia All Be One has just sort of come out, and um, I think that's a set that's really like nailed the um, the equipment uh, kind of theme like well. Uh, so I kind of I don't know, because <laughs> I I feel like lots of sets have tried to make equipment as a kind of strategy or as an archetype work, and I think this would be better if um, I don't know if made equipment cost less or like made equipment. Uh, easier to equip or, or you could equip it in some speed stuff like that you know some effects that we saw back in the mirrors and decks but this is this is okay but i say it's judging you know there's not a lot of equipment in the deck to support it basically which is a shame anyway uh let's move on uh, so we have core duelist uh one white mana for a one one uh as long as it's equipped it has double strike um but as as i've just said there's three equipment in this deck um, so, which is which is not wonderful. Um, I think this is a, this is an okay card. Um, obviously you gotta you know jump through a hoop to like you know get it you know firing off. But you know it is nice that uh, it gets an extra bonus. I do generally like creatures like this that um they get some sort of bonus when they're equipped because then obviously you're getting the bonus from the equipment and you're also getting their other bonus as well. So I do I do generally like these these sorts of creatures whenever they show up. Um, and then two core Skyfisher. This is pretty fun, I think. So one card's one white for a 2-3 flyer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, return a permanent you control to owner's hand. So this is okay, because you can return a, you know, just a one, one cost permanent, you know, like core duelist. Um, so you're not really being set back that much. And you're getting, you know, a 2-3 flyer for only two mana, which is a pretty good rate. Um, obviously, I think one of the main intended strategies for this or synergies would be to return lands, because Zendikar being a deck, um, being a deck, being a block that uh, features landfall, has a big lands matter uh, theme. It's where, you know, we, we have landfall for the first time, which is a really popular mechanic. So I guess that would be the intended synergy. I don't think there's any landfall spells in this deck, um, but we'll see. But yeah, overall, I think Core Skyfish is, is, is pretty good. Just for two mana is, I think, really, really strong. Uh, then we have two core aeronauts, uh, so two white mana for a 2-2 flyer, which is fine. That's um, Leon in Sky Hunter stats. And it has Kicker, so Kicker is back in Zendikar. Um, I really like Kicker as a mechanic, was, and uh, it makes sense in Zendikar. It's a, you know, it's a block where there's so much focus on getting lands into play, so you, you know, going to have maybe a lot of excess mana, so then, yeah, you've got mana to do to pay these kicker costs. Um, so when Court Aeronaut enters the battlefield, it was kicked. Um, another creature gets flying till end of turn. Um, so yeah, I think this is fine. I think that kicker cost is maybe a tiny bit expensive, but it does give evasion to your creatures. It's essentially like a free, um, you know, just a free buff, so one of your creatures can attack over um, your opponent's ground creatures. So yeah, I think it's fine. Um, on its own, I think without the kicker, it's absolutely fine. And this is this is kind of a thing that um, there are some. There are some creatures in the block that do have kicker costs, but um, it's like such a trap choice. Like, 
you know, you don't you're not getting a good deal if you um cast them without kicker. So I like cards like this where um you know if you you know it's valid to play it without kicker and it's still okay. Because I say it's still a two two flyer. Uh, two core hookmaster, so two colors and a white uh, for two two. Uh, when it ends the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, and it doesn't untap during its controls next untap step. So this is an ability we normally associate with blue these days. Um, this is fine. Um, yeah, it's perfectly fine. I think three mana for a two two with this ability, it's okay. Um, <laughs> classic classic Wayne Reynolds art pose here. Um, if if, this, if you're ever interested, um, look up all of the magic magic cards that Wayne Reynolds has as illustrated. I think he's a great artist. Um, but if you go back, you will see like so many <laughs> so many creatures he illustrates have this exact pose of like leaning forward, arms really wide in like a Y shape. It's just really funny <laughs> to me. But yeah, anyway. Uh, core hook master again. Yeah, I say perfectly, perfectly fine, perfectly good common. Uh, two core sanctifiers. Uh, two and a white for a two three, uh, which is okay. Right. Uh, kicker for one white. Uh, when it's kicked, uh, you do disenchant, which is fine. So you know, casting this at four mana, getting a two three with this, with a disenchant effect, I think is perfectly fine. Um, there's, uh, I guess, there's a few artifacts and enchantments kicking around in Zendikar block. Um, it is mostly lands and creatures. Um. Mm, there's 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 a few artifacts and charms. I mean, the fact that it's a kicker cost means that like you don't have to, you don't have to do it. Like you're not, you know, if you if this was just when it comes to play, destroy an artifact or enchantment, um, you know, and it had it was always that you know you'd feel bad about casting it for four mana and not being able to do the effect. Uh, so yeah, this is a a good example of uh, why why kicker is a good mechanic. I think that it gives like this kind of modality to cards. Uh, two core cartographers, uh, three and a white. For a two two, when it ends the battlefield, you may search your library of planes, put it into the battlefield tap, and then shuffle your library. Yep, so uh, white land ramp spell, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, four mana is a little expensive, obviously for a ramp spell, but yeah, it's still okay, I suppose. It doesn't say basic um planes, which is you know which matters for constructed. I say it doesn't really matter here, but it does matter uh, in constructed. Not sure this was ever really used in constructed formats, but always good to know. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. Just, yeah, perfectly fine. Um, and then a single Sarah Angel because, so this is a, we're continuing on from like what happened in Alara. We're using um, cards from the most recent core set. So yeah, Sarah Angel's in here, uh, which is, you know, Sarah Angel's a fine card to include, you know, five mana, four, four flying vigilance. We all know Sarah Angel. Yeah, just works really well in here. I think just having, uh, you know, tops off your uh, mana curve quite nicely. Uh, so the other rare in the deck is Conqueror's Pledge. Uh, so two colors and triple white um, for and has kicker six. Um, so it puts six 1-1 uh, one, one white core soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. If Conqueror's Pledge was kicked, uh, so it would cost what? Eight, no, it would cost 11 mana. Um, you get 12 tokens instead. Um, I mean, good for you if you get to 11 mana. Um, I think normally you're going to be costing, casting this for five just to get six um, core soldiers. Um, you know, the fact that they are core soldiers obviously matters with Armament Master. Uh, you know, if he's, if that's got at least one equipment on it, these are coming in as three threes, which is, you know, really strong. Um, I would love it if this was instant, but I think it would almost be too good at instant speed. Um, so yeah, I think I think Conqueror's Pledge is, 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 is an okay rare, you know? Um, and then the three equipment, <laughs> this, this is it. This is the three equipment. It's meant to be a deck all about like the core and equipment, and this is it. Um, so you have a single Explorer Scope. Uh, so one mana equipment, whenever a quick creature attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, put it onto the battlefield tapped, which is like, that's an okay effect, I suppose. Um, a single Spider Silk Neck, uh, Spider Silk Net, which is zero mana, equipped creature gets plus naught, plus two, and has reach, and it has equip, equip two. Um, again, this is like, okay. Um, but <laughs> so it's not exactly setting the world on fire, is it? It's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, the toughness boost is appreciated. The fact it costs nothing is okay. So this is all right to return with um, core sky fisher. So you can just immediately replay it for free. That's fine. Um, and then a single trusty machete, which is just one mana. Equip creature gets plus two, plus one. Equip two. Um, yeah. Kind of feel like there should have been at least two of these, maybe. But I have no, I have no idea why it's uncommon. Absolutely no idea. <laughs> like it's the most like it's such a basic piece of equipment. I have no idea why it's uncommon. Um. So yeah, that's it. That's that was that's the equipment <laughs> in this deck. 
Um, so then a narrow escape, two and a white. Uh, return target permanent you control to owner's hand, you gain four life. I have always thought this is like a little expensive. Like it's a good like rescue effect. Um, but a three mana, I always think this is a little expensive. Um, I would be, you know, if this was like two or even just one white mana, I think that would be okay. Um, just to, you know, uh, to rescue one of your stuff and you get four life. Um, at three, I think it's too expensive, personally. Um, single Divine Verdict from M10. Yep, just standard white kill spell, four mana, destroys an attacking or blocking creature. Yep, this is okay. Um, and a single Windborn Charge, two and two white. Two target creatures you control, each get plus two, plus two, and gain flying to lend turn. So you've actually got quite a few, um, you know, winning in the air with this, with flying creatures, is actually a fairly valid tactic with this deck, I think, because, uh, yeah, you've got, you've got the core Aeronaut, you've got the core Skyfishers, uh, you've got Sarah Angel, you've got Windborn Charge, you've got quite a lot of ways of, um, you know, getting flying in this, so that's actually, uh, you know, you thought it was all about equipment, it's actually about flyers, apparently, but yeah, I think this is a perfect, for, for four mana, um, this is okay, I think this is um, essentially double angelic blessing, really, isn't it, I suppose, uh, yeah, I think it's all right. Um, a single land bind ritual, uh, so three and two white. You gain two life for every planes you control. Um, yeah, it's just it's just boring, bad life gain. Um, I mean, I guess what you're you're playing this when you have five lands out because you know it costs five mana. You've got no other ramp in this deck, um, or you know mana rocks or mana source or whatever, so that you're getting ten life, I suppose. But um, I just feel this could have been like another piece of equipment. Like <laughs> it's just okay. It's just it's just life gain. It's just a bit boring. Um, and then two Grax. We gotta have yeah. I think pretty much every white deck in this block is gonna have at least one Grack in it. So yep. Uh, and then two Kabira Crossroads. So these are really cool from Zendikar. These um, um, these like spell effect lands. Um, so they're common, which is really refreshing because I'd expect them to be uncommon, but they're not. Uh, so they usually come into play tapped. Um. And they usually have a small effect, and then they tap for a, a mana of a single color. So there's two of these in each color. So there's five in Zendikar, and there's five in World Wake. And I, I generally think they're all they're all pretty good. Um, Kabira Crossroads is, I say that is probably the weakest, um, just because it is like life gain. Um, the one in World Wake, Sajiri Step, is really really good because it gives protection from a color until end of turn. Um, to a creature, which is is pretty good, but yeah, all of the all of these are really good um, little effects, just tacking on these small effects onto a land. So it doesn't matter actually much that it's coming into play tapped because you are still getting something the turn you play it, which is good. And also, it's you know, it's a another good thing to return with um, Yo know, Core Sky Fisher, and then sixteen planes. So, uh, what could have been? So definitely needed. I feel like more focus on equipment in the deck because that's kind of what it's meant to be about. Um, so I thought Grappling Hook could be a rare instead of a Conqueror's Pledge, just because it's another piece of equipment. Um, it's four mana, gives the equipped creature double strike, and whenever a crit creature attacks, um, you force um, an enemy creature to block it this turn, which is pretty cool. It's pretty expensive to equip, but um, yeah, just giving double strike is is obviously pretty strong. Um, and honestly, there's actually not that much equipment in, in Zendikar, despite it being kind of like a theme for the core, but anyway. Uh, quest for the Holy Relic, I thought could have gone here as well, and so maybe instead of Landbind Ritual. So just one white mana is an enchantment, and I'm I'm gonna probably I'll talk about it now. Um, it really annoys me that because there's a whole cycle of these in in like in different rarities in Zendikar, like these quest for the X or you know, and it really annoys me that they don't have quest as like a subtype. I would love it if these were enchantment quests, you know. Because then you could have a whole bunch of cards that cared about quests, you know, that specifically reference quests. But anyway, um, so Quest for the Holy Relic, uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, you can put a quest counter on Quest for Holy Relic, remove five quest counters, sacrifice it, search your library for an equipment, put it on the battlefield, and then attach it for free. So it's a really strong effect, like it tutors up an equipment, puts it into play for free, and equips it for free. Um, so I think it's pretty strong, and the fact this only costs one white anyway means that you can, you know, drop it first turn, and then you can build up the quest counters, um, yeah, really quickly. So that could have been here, I think. And also just core outfitter, just uh, two white mana for a two two. Uh, when it ends the battlefield, you can just um attach an equipment for free, which is you know it's perfectly fine, especially if you paired it with grappling hook, which has quite an expensive equip cost. Um, but yeah, and it's just another core to have in here. So um overall. Um, 
I mean, this is the thing. Like these, these. So these decks are still forty-one cards. So we are. It is kind of limited in what they can do because you're not really working with a lot of cards here. Um, and also, it's just really clear they're just. I don't think there was really the card pool in Zendikar to properly support this. Like you could do like core white weenie, absolutely fine, sure. But I say they've got so many effects that care about equipment, and there's not really that much equipment to for them to work with. This I don't know if this would have worked better maybe in World Wake where there was a few more equipment cards released. But as said, you know, it's it's pretty hard to have a deck that, you know, is meant to be like equipment matters and you have three equipment cards, you know, it's just, you know, so really it's just kind of just standard white weenie. Uh, as I said, so there's a surprising amount of flying in here. So, yeah, that's kind of really more how you're going to win. But um, yeah, I think it's overall OK. It's like it's a, I think it's like an OK foundation, like if you bought in added more core and more equipment cards, to it, I think it'd be OK. But like compared to... um. I know some of the other equipment matters decks we've seen in the past, mostly little bashers from Mirrodin. I just don't think it it holds up too well. It's all right, you know, it's okay, but yeah. Uh, but that's my thoughts on it. After after looking at what were your thoughts, um, you know, if you've got any comments, opinions, stories about this deck, put a comment below. Always like reading those. Uh, but I'll be back next time to look at another Zendikar intro pack. But until then, thanks for watching, and listening. Have a great day.